sauerkraut is probably the most famous European fermented vegetable. And yes, you can buy jars of it in the store now, but to get the true health benefits of it, you should make it at home. Now, this is just a good old classic white cabbage. You need one kilo of white cabbage. Savoy cabbage works nicely too, which is a curly cabbage, and you need to shred it. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I want this to be quite fine, so I'm going to use my cuisine companion to slice it. This makes sure that each slice is uniform and it's as fine as possible. I've placed on a slicer, so a really fine slicer, and now we're ready to go. So, just through the shoot, I'll feed through chunks of cabbage so it's finely sliced. Okay, within moments, our cabbage is completely shredded. I want to show you how perfect the shredding is. See how fine it is? This is such a key element when you're making sauerkraut. You need this to be nice and fine, just like this. All right, one kilo of cabbage we'll place into a large bowl. Just pour that in, and it seems like a lot, but now I'm going to start to add the salt. Now, the salt is not only going to preserve this, but it's also going to bring out all of the moisture. Now, that moisture is key to preserving this. So, one tablespoon of sea salt. And now, with your hands, you need to combine this and crush it. I actually find this quite therapeutic. As you start this, you may think there's no liquid coming out, but 10 to 15 minutes after breaking down the fibres in the cabbage, around three quarters of a cup of liquid will form. Now, 15 minutes later, and you can see how much liquid we've produced, quite simply, with a combination of cabbage and salt. Now you can get really creative with the flavours that you add to this. I'm going to keep it quite traditional with some caraway seeds, about a teaspoon, and some fresh bay leaves straight off my bay leaf tree. So just give that a mix. And now it's time to store this. This is a 1.2 litre jar. I've sterilised it, so washed it in hot soapy water and then dried it out in the oven around 60 to 80 degrees. Now, to fill this, squeeze out the excess water because we need that water to cover the top of this. So, little by little, get some handfuls and place it in the jar and some more. And then with something quite heavy or just the back of a wooden spoon, very gently, obviously because it's glass, press down and compress the cabbage. We want this to be nice and tight in the jar. Now I'll add one of our bay leaves and then I'm just going to continue the process. Don't fill this all the way to the top. We want to fill it at least three quarters of the way and leaving that gap at the top. We need that for the liquid, and we also need to know that this will expand a little bit as it ferments. So I can add a small amount more just in there. And then again, pressing that down. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Now we need to add the all important liquid. So just carefully drizzle that in. And then again, we need to press it down so all of that cabbage is submerged in the liquid. Now this needs to stay on the bench for roughly one to two weeks. Now this depends on how hot it is. If you're in winter, it will take about two weeks. In summer, it'll take one week. Make sure you don't put it in the sunlight. So you can put it in the cupboard if you like, uh, but I just leave it in a nice dry area. And then this is what happens. I've been fermenting this one for about a week and a half. You can see the difference. You can see how much it fills up the jar too. This tastes divine. What we're looking for in regards to taste is saltiness. It will be pungent in smell. That's a good thing. And when you taste it, it should actually taste a little bit 
fuzzy. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but it should be almost a little bit sparkly. That is the good bacteria for the gut. And this is delicious as is, but it's also fantastic in sandwiches, toasties if you like, fantastic in salads too. Enjoy.